Today I want to tell you about our clear casting resin series, the Crystal Cast series. They're a crystal clear, water white type of material, low viscosity, easy to work with, and it can be used for a variety of things. And I've laid out a few things here just to show you, from uh, clear castables, statues, it's actually a beer tap, but it's been tinted slightly green. We offer a range of translucent dyes as well as opaque pigments to go with this to add more value to the product that you're trying to make with it. Decorative statues. And this is a larger piece that was cast. These are non-yellowing and they're good for uses indoor and outdoor as well. Well, there's a few things you need to know about when you're working with clear castable polyurethanes that are a little bit different than some of the other urethane castables the same way. One thing is the selection of mold. If you're trying to keep a piece that's going to be totally clear and have a glass-like appearance, the best choice is going to be a platinum-cured silicone mold. Well, usually out there you see condensation-cured and platinum-cured silicones. The condensation-cured silicones sometimes can be used, but they contain a large amount of tin catalyst and sometimes isopropyl alcohol as a diluent, and they cause prob surface problems and curing problems with the crystal cast products. To correct that, you can take a condensation cured silicone mold, put it in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about four hours. Won't hurt it. Silicones are happy up to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. And bake out the unwanted isopropyl alcohol so you can use your condensation cured silicone molds with the crystal cast. The best one, by far, is the platinum cured silicones. They give you great fidelity and they don't interfere with any of the curing mechanisms of the crystal cast series of polymers. What's important is you can use other molds like metal molds or either machine plastic molds. Those work fine. But you'll have to use a release agent, a silicone spray. But more than likely when you do that, the surface is going to be foggy because of the silicone sprays that are used on the surface. Remember, your mold is going to give you what you give it back to the part, meaning that if you cast a perfectly smooth glass-like part in a silicone mold, when you mold the crystal cast in it, you'll get the same thing. When working with the Crystal Cast series of polymers, it's really important that you choose to work in a place that has a controlled environment. What do I mean? The temperature is controlled, say an air-conditioned room works great, and the humidity is low too, because water is your enemy. Water from the atmosphere or water from some of the appliances and things you're working with. Never use wood. You always want to use plastic or steel spatulas to mix with. Never use paper cups. Always plastic cups because, again, they'll absorb water from the, plastic, from the paper cups. So this is something that you need to also know about. When working with the clears to get totally bubble-free parts, it's very important that you vacuum the liquids and pull out all the unwanted air that's been entrapped with it before you pour it into your mold. They make a lot of vacuum chambers that are fairly inexpensive. This one is actually plastic. It's Lexan polycarbonate, and it's available from many laboratory supplies. It works great in a full, vac full vacuum. Usually runs around $90, and it can uh, hold up to a gallon of liquid that's in there. And we're going to show you exactly how to size the container and how to know when the, when the liquids have been sufficiently vacuumed. It's very so important that you refer to the technical data sheets for the correct ratio, either by volume or by weight, to get the correct measurement. In this case, it's one to one. So we've measured out equal volumes in plastic containers, beakers. And in this case, we're going to do 150 milliliters of part A and 150 milliliters of part B. And then mix them and pour them into a secondary cup. This ensures that we don't have any sticky spots or unmixed material. Once we've done that, we're going to put them in the vacuum chamber and then we're going to show you how to do it. Okay? So here we go. Doesn't matter which one you pour in first or whichever. So we're going to pour in the part A and the part B and we're going to mix it with a flat spatula, not a round dowel. And it's going to be a metal spatula or plastic, uh, not wood, because we'll introduce water into the mixture. Okay, it looks like we've got it mixed in our first container fairly well because it's fairly low viscosity. We're going to pour it into our secondary container and kind of scrape the sides to get it all out. No rush. You've got about a half an hour or more at 72 degrees to work with this particular polymer. Remember, it's best to climatize your, your resins to 70, 72 degrees to get the pot life working time that's listed in the technical data. Warmer temperatures, 
shorter working time. Colder temperatures, longer working time. And that's why it's important to work in a controlled environment for temperature and for humidity. Okay, so we've mixed up our crystal cast 9024 and now we're ready to vacuum it. So here's a typical lab setup for vacuuming these clear polymers. We've got our vacuum chamber. And we've got it tied to a hose, a non-collapsing hose. It's tied into our vacuum pump. Ours is for convenience is in another room because it makes a lot of noise. And then we also have uh, a dump valve here because remember once you pull a vacuum on this chamber if you don't restore it to atmospheric pressure you can't open it. So this is a dump valve that we've had here and also we have a gauge and the gauge goes from zero all the way down to 30 inches of mercury which is an indication of vacuum and as we told you earlier you really need to be about 25 inches of mercury on the vacuum setting to know that you're doing some good. And so uh, we're ready to vacuum. So we said we were going to vacuum some of the polymer. Remember, there's several ways that you can introduce bubbles into the liquids. One is by just simply mixing it. Another one is when we pour it into the mold. And then another is CO2 that's hidden in there from some of the storage processes. So we're trying to get all this out. Okay? So we're going to put this in our vacuum chamber. And we're going to start the vacuum. Well, we're degassing the liquid portion, and you can see it rises a lot more than you probably would imagine. So it's important that you size your mixing container that you're going to vacuum in to be, have quite a bit of headspace to accommodate that expansion. Normally, as a rule in the lab, I always have about one third of the, of the, of the container as liquid and two thirds for the expansion. It just depends on the polymer. Well, it looks like we've reached the end, and the polymer has stretched and it's all starting to settle down now. We'll just keep on with the vacuuming until it goes clear and then we'll be ready to pour into our mold. Okay, so we vacuumed the Crystal Cast 9024 and now we're ready to pour into our mold. And we've selected a platinum cured silicone mold to pour it into to demonstrate the parts for you. As I mentioned, there's a lot of places you can introduce air. Well, we stirred some air in and we also had some degassing from the original process we had to get out. We've done that, so we're going to pour into the mold. So now we're going to introduce air by just simply pouring it in there. So it's nice to pour the molds as close as you can to avoid rolling the liquids and introducing even more air. So we're going to fill this one up. Okay, that looks pretty good. And finish here. Just let it give it enough time so it flows out nice and evenly. And if you have some trap bubbles, you should take maybe a, like a metallic wire or a metal spatula, not wood, to tickle the, uh, any of the air that is trying to hold itself against the side or bottom of the container. And then finally, when the air rises up, if it doesn't pop on its own, a small propane torch works great. What you want to do is you don't want to burn the polymer, you just want to warm the air above it, okay? And it'll gently pop it. So if you spend too much time and too much heat, you'll ruin the polymer. So in this case, I've got just a few and I want to really make this glassy. That's it. That's it. That's it, and we're done. Okay, we're going to let this set overnight, and then tomorrow we're going to pull this out. We're going to show you some really great parts.